Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak, and in this video I want to take some time to talk about the two biggest questions that people have when they're considering building a skin on frame boat, and that is, how durable are they and how long do they last? Now, before I get into this here, I just want to mention that even though I've been a full-time skin on frame boat builder for over 20 years, I've built hundreds of skin on frame watercraft, and I've supervised the construction of almost 2,000 skin on frame watercraft, so I've had lots of opportunity to see how these things do and don't survive different challenging situations. At the same time, I've also been an avid user of all different kinds of boats, composite boats, plastic boats, wooden boats, and what I feel like I've realized over the years is that any small watercraft of the same weight and the same size is usually as durable as any other small watercraft of the same weight and size, although the durability characteristics might be a little bit different. So what I want to do in this video is talk about some of the advantages and the disadvantages of skin on frame boat building from a durability perspective so you can make an informed choice both about how to build your skin boat and also whether you should build a skin boat at all or whether you should consider some other type of boat building medium. Now, what I'm not going to do in this video is any kind of arbitrary tests like you see where people are hitting them with hammers or they're dragging them across parking lots because even though those kind of tests are useful to help alleviate people's fears that skin on frame boats are really fragile, I just don't think it's a very good analog to the type of forces that we're actually encountering on the water. So if you were to take a skin boat and hit it with a hammer, that's a very high velocity but low impact force perpendicular to the surface of the skin. Whereas if you actually hit an object in the water, that is almost the opposite scenario. You've got a very high force, very low velocity impact, usually at a glancing angle to the skin. So this, hitting these with hammers or doing anything else really isn't a good testing scenario for a skin boat or any other type of boat. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna talk kind of briefly about the whole spectrum of durability of different layups of skin boats and how they compare to similar layups of composite boats. And then I'm going to start just giving some real world examples so you can get an actual experience perspective on what you can expect a skin boat to survive and where you can expect it to fail. So starting out with the very lightest end of the spectrum, which would be the geodesic light craft that were originally designed by Platt Monfort. Those boats are exquisitely engineered, but they're very lightly built. They have sparse framing members that are far apart and they have a lightweight skin, which means they're remarkably light but they're also somewhat fragile. And I think when most people see skin on frame boats, what they think is gonna happen is similar to what would actually happen in a geodesic light boat. Now, going to the other end of the spectrum, I don't know why you would ever do this, but if you wanted to build your skin on frame boat completely out of white oak and skin it with an 18 ounce skin and 10 coats of two part polyurethane, well, in that case, you're gonna have a boat that is almost as indestructible as a rota molded kayak but it's also gonna weigh 70 pounds, just like a rotomolded molded kayak. So just like every kind of boat building, how strong your boat is really just depends on um, how heavily it's built. Now, there's one more factor here though that can make a big difference, and that is just how well the entire framing is balanced and also how well it is armored at key wear points. And this is exactly the same for composite boat building as well. You have to make sure that your frame is as light as it can be, but also balanced in strength. So you don't have a big heavy spot that's gonna fail way longer than some other lighter spot. And also you wanna make sure that you have either fiberglass or wear strips or some other abrasion protection at the key points along the keel and the chine where all boats tend to wear through pretty quickly, especially ones that are being run up onto beaches. So assuming that that's true, let's kind of get into kind of a medium weight layup. Now, my standard medium weight layup for a mid-sized um, kayak or canoe is going to weigh somewhere between 27 and 33 pounds, depending on what size a person it's built for. I'm usually making my longitudinals out of red cedar to keep it nice and light. I make my ribs out of white oak to make it nice and strong. And then I coat it with a nine ounce ballistic nylon skin coated with three to four coats of two part polyurethane. And all of those things together gives me a boat that is nice and light. So it's really enjoyable to use. It's nice to paddle and the weight of it doesn't become a barrier to going to use it because as soon as something gets a little too heavy or annoying to use, you just end up not going paddling very often. But at the same time, it also gives me a boat that's reasonably durable that I can still hit rocks and sticks and just the normal wear and tear of a boat over time. And I don't have to worry that it's immediately gonna fail. Now, what that would be similar to in the composite boat building world would be 
a well-made carbon Kevlar layup for a standard composite, a well-made cedar strip boat, or a well-made um, plywood boat. Although most of those are gonna be pushing closer to 40 pounds, which means that really the analogy for one of my boats would be one with a 12 ounce skin, which actually gives you a lot more durability if you're willing to pay the weight penalty. Now, the difference between a skin boat versus any other type of boat, at least these composite layups that I was just talking about, is that you're making a trade-off where the skin on frame boat is going to be less puncture resistant and less abrasion resistant, but far more impact resistant and the composite boat is going to be more puncture resistant and more abrasion resistant, but far less impact resistant. Now, I think on the surface of it, the calculus of that might steer people more towards a composite boat because they're thinking, well, I don't wanna get a puncture in my skin boat, so I'm gonna go over to this other boat. But in the real world, when I say less puncture resistant, we're still talking about an extremely low failure rate. Of the 2,000 boats that I have personally supervised being constructed, I only know of four on the water punctures in over 20 years. And so that's a really low failure rate. Now, I'm not a composite boat builder, so I have nothing to compare that to, but I feel like if you took 2,000 composite boats over the period of 20 years, you would probably report an equal failure rate at least of catastrophic hull damage due to hitting a rock or you know some other big heavy submerged obstacle and so real world scenario skin boats end up being pretty darn tough um, another way to think about this would be if i were to take this boat two stories and drop it onto the pavement i would take a thousand dollar bet right now that you would see no significant damage to this boat but if you were to take a uh, composite boat and do the same thing I think we can pretty much guarantee that's gonna be some sort of a catastrophic failure. Now, on the other hand, if I put both boats against the wall and I ran at this one with a samurai sword, I'm pretty sure that I could cut a hole in it and I'm pretty sure that the composite boat, as long as it wasn't straight into it, might deflect the sword. And so you really have to think about the kind of obstacles that you might potentially be encountering. Now, when it comes to things like sharp sticks and sharp rocks, skin on frame is usually just fine. It'll usually end up scratching really badly, but very, very rarely are you gonna see any kind of a serious issue. The only things that I've seen actually seriously damage a skin on frame skin is oyster shells and coral. Although that's two incidents that I'm talking about and the one with coral was kind of an extreme circumstance that I don't think any normal person would ever end up in. And so the one with the oyster shells was a very heavy person that paddled right over a shallow bed of oyster shells and managed to cut the skin. But there's also been a lot of other people that have paddled over oyster shells and sent me pictures and said, oh man, I scratched my boat really bad, Brian, do I need to reskin it? And I look at it and it's not even cutting into the skin, so it's probably fine. Um, on the contrary, you know, talking about a uh, composite boat, you know, if you hit one of those into a rock really hard, there's a good chance that you're gonna actually crack the boat in a way where it's gonna need to be repaired, whereas a skin boat's not gonna have that problem. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of the trade-offs for um, puncture resistance and catastrophic failure. The other one we need to think about is abrasion. Now, abrasion is a problem for any type of a kayak or canoe. And if you're running things up onto beaches very frequently, you're gonna get a lot of wear on the bottom of the keel and the chines, especially at the bow and the stern. And what fiberglass guys do is they put extra fiberglass here so it'll wear through slower. And if you're building a skin on frame boat, what you need to do is just put a little bit of extra coating on the bottom of the boat. And you also need to think about armoring the bow and the stern a little bit, which is something that I do on my own kayaks, just to make sure that the skin in those areas doesn't wear through years before the rest of the boat would wear through. Now, this kind of segues into the subject of longevity here, which is how long is a skin on frame boat gonna last? Now, I'm not gonna talk too much about the framing here because in some skin boats, the framing members are actually the determining factor for the life of the skin boat. And oftentimes, premature failure of the frame is just because most people are making their ribs too small in a skin on frame boat and they collapse over time. But in my boats, I've kind of worked out a formula that's a good balance between strength and weight so we don't see a lot of hull collapse. So it turns out that the life of the skin is really the limiting factor here. Now, the first subject is repairability. Now, if you get a small puncture or a small spot of abrasion on your skin on frame boat, you can usually repair that with just a little gob of sealant there. Worst case scenario, a tiny cut 
can be sewed together and then you can put some uh, goop over that. And if you do have a catastrophic situation, which literally I've only heard of happening three times, as long as the cut isn't too long, you could consider laminating on a patch. But I think that looks really terrible and personally I would rather just go ahead and replace the skin. Now, if you need to replace the skin, the time you're gonna put into that is about three days and about $200 in materials. And if you contrast that, like I said earlier, against the ultimate time it takes to build any other boat, you're still coming out ahead in the overall time of a skin boat if you have to reskin it once or twice during its lifetime. Now, the natural lifespan of a skin, if you're using it pretty frequently and you're not being super careful with it, I feel like is about five years or 5,000 miles. Now, granted, there's some people that take really good care of their skin boats, and I frequently get messages from people who are still using the same skin after 10 or 15 years, and then the other end of the spectrum would be someone like me who just does horrifying things to boats because I'm trying to do testing to see where they're gonna fail. And in that case, I've killed skins, you know, in 2,000 miles or a couple years, and occasionally catastrophically, but that was very deliberately on purpose. Now, I should mention here that if you have a failure on the water, you have the same options that you would have in a composite boat, where you could get out a roll of duct tape or some type of a bitumen membrane, and you could put it over any spot of damage, and then you could just keep paddling. Like I said, the frame is very unlikely to fail, at least in one of my skin boats, and so it's really just a matter of sealing any damage until you can get to a situation where you can do a more permanent repair. So that kind of gives you just a rough idea of some of the advantages and disadvantages of skin on frame, but I still don't feel like that gives you a real world idea of what to expect. So now we're gonna get into story time here and I'm just gonna give you some scenarios of situations where I've seen skin boats survive and situations where I've seen them fail. So starting out with the most recent one, uh, Liz and I were paddling the canoes. We were catamaran together. We were paddling at full speed and all of a sudden her boat just stopped and my boat spun around and we were stuck on something. And we were in pretty shallow water in more of an industrial area, and we're looking around and we can't figure out what we're stuck on, but no matter how hard we try, we can't get the boat off. And so I had Liz climb out of her boat into my boat, and we lifted her boat up and pushed it off. It turns out that we were grounded on a piece of rebar that was sticking up out of an old piling. And that left a wicked scratch in the bottom of the boat, but it did not penetrate the coating, and it did not even get anywhere near the skin. So that's number one. Um, another one that I can think of right offhand would be uh, about 15 years ago, I was paddling a Greenland boat in a flood on a river, don't ask, and I got caught on a barbed wire fence. Now, this particular boat had a 12 ounce skin on it, but I was still just raking it back and forth on this barbed wire, trying to get unstuck. And finally I got unstuck and there was a bad scratch down the length of the boat. But once again, it did not actually cut into the skin and I sold that boat and it was paddled for another 10 years. Um, another situation which was pretty extreme is when I was coming in through the surf in a double and we misjudged the waves and we ended up getting thrown end for end in a double kayak on a 14 foot wave. And it was actually a pretty terrifying situation. We got blown out of the boat. We had to swim for 20 minutes to get to shore. And the boat actually washed around a corner into a cliff lined cove where it was thrown full of water by the surf up onto the rocks. Now, I wasn't expecting any more than basically a bag full of wooden shards when I got down there, but I was blown away to find that everything metal on deck was obliterated. Fishing poles, fishing reels, the rudder, every bit of metal gone. But the skin boat itself had one cracked rib and it had some pretty bad abrasion, but no actual penetration through the skin. And we also continued to use that boat as well. And so that's pretty amazing to me that something filled with water could get thrown up onto rocks in the surf like that and survive. And it's a really testament to the strength of a skin boat due to its flexibility. Because I think because this entire thing flexes just a little bit, it can really absorb those more extreme forces. Now, another one I wanted to mention was a couple years ago, we were taking pack canoes down a river and the boats were really just too small for the river that we were on. I'm sure there's a theme with all of my stories here called me not being very intelligent, but we're not gonna pay attention to that right now. Anyways, we're in these pack canoes and we're trying to go down a whitewater river and it turns out that we got swamped and we got separated and I ended up washing a lot further downstream and when I hiked back up to find my paddling partner, she was in waist deep water and the canoe was wrapped around a rock 
facing upstream. So the whole force of the river was pouring into a 20 pound pack canoe and the shear of that pack canoe, which is normally about four inches positive, was actually flexing about two inches negative around this rock. And when I saw that, I thought we were in a lot of trouble. I figured honestly, we were gonna have to walk out. But we got the boat off the rock and there was no damage to the skin and there was no damage to the frame. And that's a boat that was built very lightly out of red cedar and white oak. And so, you know, not indestructible, but decent durability. All right, now let's get into uh, situations where I've seen skin boats fail. The first one that I mentioned earlier was a report that I got of a very heavy person running full steam into a bed of exposed oysters. And they sliced a hole about this long in the bottom of the boat. Now, I've seen a lot of other people hit oysters and just get bad scratches, but oysters are pretty sharp and they can cut through your boat. Now, the other scenario is kind of extreme here. And this was my friend Rich, who got thrown by a 20 foot wave onto a dry reef in Hawaii. Now, miraculously, Rich was fine because he's not made out of the stuff as other human beings are, but his boat was not fine. It was actually broken in half and it had multiple punctures. So don't get thrown 17 feet onto dry reefs if you want your skin boat to survive. Uh, another situation where um, I've seen a skin boat failure was really early in my skin boat building career. I was in an early model of one of my modern boats and I was surfing in a tide race and it was just getting shallower and shallower, but there was this really nice hole that I was working and I was, you know, surfing back and forth. And, and, but as it got shallower, eventually it started to expose the rock at the bottom of the hull. And, you know, every three or four recirculations, my boat would just come back down and hit that rock and back down and hit that rock. And that happened for maybe 30 or 40 minutes. And when I finally got back to shore, I realized that there wasn't a hole that was letting water in, but right where the actual chine was backed by the skin, there was a hole right there. And I ended up having to patch that. So, you know, if you're getting a lot of sustained abrasion, that's not a good thing. Um, I got a report just a few weeks ago from a friend of mine who's been paddling his skin boats for many, many years. And he actually punctured his boat running into something. And I think he lives in an area where they built a lot of boats at one time. There's a lot of stuff in the water on the East Coast. And so there's really no way to know if that was metal that he hit or not. He said he didn't stick around because he was sinking pretty quickly, but he hit something very sharp that was submerged and it punched a hole in his skin boat and he had to put a patch on it. So two more situations in which I've seen skin boats survive that were kind of unusual um, that didn't involve being in the water. One of them was I had two boats on top of the canopy of my pickup and apparently the bolts had come loose and I was driving and all of a sudden I just saw light in the rear view mirror behind me. And I looked up and back and my canopy was flipping in the air and it came down right on top of the skin boats and it just obliterated, just destroyed. Um, the skin boats were fine. There was no frame damage. There was some pretty bad scratching and abrasion though. Um, another one would be a friend of mine who wasn't thinking that he had a boat on top of his car and he drove it through a fast food drive-in and he actually ripped the drive-in awning off the building. Now that one, we had some frame damage. We didn't have a puncture to the skin, but it did break one of the deck beams. Um, another one that you can actually see photographic evidence of on my old site was my friend Anton in Montana who just finished this beautiful recovery kayak and he's driving down the road in this, oh, it's so tragic. It was a 1980s diesel Toyota small pickup, super rare engine. Anyways, um, he's driving down the road and uh, he keeps looking up at his boat because he's so happy that he built this beautiful boat. And while he's looking up at it, he drives off the road and flips his pickup. and. What you see in the picture is that the hood of the pickup is dented in and the windshield is shattered. And that boat also suffered damage. It did have some broken framing members, but it didn't destroy the boat by any means. And it did destroy the truck. So that's pretty unusual as well. So I guess the overall thing I'm trying to communicate here is that skin boats are just like any other small boat. They're not indestructible, but they're much stronger than they look. And then they, you can usually survive some pretty harsh scenarios as long as you're taking care of them. And most importantly, if you're just keeping in mind the vulnerabilities of a skin boat, which is that you need to be a little more careful when you're dragging it over things because that abrasion starts to add up pretty quickly. 
but it's not as easy to repair on a fiberglass boat, and it does mean you're gonna have to get a reskin if you get too much of it. It means that you shouldn't be paddling into submerged samurai swords if you can avoid it. It means that you can be less afraid when you're around rocks, especially if you're surfing around rocks. I've just seen so many fiberglass boats with holes in them from surfing into rocks when you're playing in the surf. And you know, skin boats don't love that, but they seem to be a little more tolerant than fiberglass boats. So anyways, I know that was a lot of talking. Usually my videos are. Hopefully this helps you to understand what skin boats can or can't survive and how they contrast against different boats. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, you can find me on my website, which is capefalconkayaks.com, where we've got a whole bunch more skin on frame boat building information, skin on frame plans, skin on frame videos. And you can find me on Instagram at Cape Falcon Builds, where I post a daily build blog of everything that I'm doing here in the shop, including videos and time lapse videos. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Take care, be safe on the water, and have fun building your skin boat.